Hi everyone. CBS News has reported on cell phones and cancer. Eight dumb ways to boost possible risk. I am not going to read all of these dumb ways to boost your possible risk to cancer with cell phones. The reason why I'm posting this video is because many of us have people in their in our lives who still insist that mainstream media is the only way to go and they think that you're crazy because you've done research and you found the evidence of the dangers that we are now subjected to they still uh-uh mainstream media is not telling me that it's dangerous so therefore what the TV tells me that's what my neighbor says the TV told me okay well CBS News you might want to circulate this to your mainstream media addicts. Maybe they'll listen. And to those who believe that mainstream media, I can't believe that you're reporting from mainstream media. They lie all the time. They, they only put out lies. No, they don't. You don't understand the propagandist or the disinformation agent and how they work. They do sometimes put out the truth. And very often when you'll have, let's say, a local news um, station report truth, then the national news agencies will report the truth. Or you have the truth having been circulated to a wide range of people, the numbers are increasing, then they'll come out and they'll give you a piece that truly is just bubblegum reporting. You know, because Americans, the adults are children, so we have been infantilized for so many decades, it's frightening. You know, they put out commercials for adults and their cartoons. Or they put out fluff pieces instead of really reporting on the evidence that is out there, but they stay away from it. And I noticed this, this is based on Dr. Deborah Davis's book, Disconnect, The Truth About Cell Phone Radiation, What the Industry is Doing to Hide It, and How to Protect Your Family. Considering what I've read in here, I think CBS, the person who, who did this, uh, has softened Dr. Davis's tone and put a little bit of a spin on it. Dr. Davis knows full well how dangerous cell phones, wireless, these gadgets, especially for children. She knows the damages, she knows the dangers, she knows what it does. And never have I ever heard Dr. Davis said, if, if there is damage from this technology, never. Dr. Davis, highly well-respected around the world, um, an award-winning researcher, scientist, epidemiologist, scholar, uh, visiting professor to universities around the world, highly qualified to speak on the subject, and she speaks about the dangers of electromagnetic, microwave, and 5G frequencies. And it's very sad to see that here is her channel, and I hope that you subscribe, 1,006 subscribers, and the view numbers... 352, 176, 97, 108, 73, 21, 48. This is a woman who is so highly qualified, trying to reach the public, not just in our country, all over the world, how dangerous it is. Try so hard to reach parents on how dangerous it is to children, infants, and even fetuses, they having, their brains are still in the developmental stage, their skulls are softer, the frequencies penetrate far easier into a child's brain than an adult's brain, 
and these frequencies doing so much damage. And you see these few numbers, 50, 656. All right, we need to circulate this channel. And I had subscribed. Cough coins to mind. Well, when you get your channel terminated, you lose a lot of your subscriptions. But she also has a website, the Environmental Health Trust. Here it is. And on this one site is a tremendous amount of information that's very, very important. And it's not just Dr. Davis's opinion, facts, studies, evidence, right here. Why do we have no safety standards? Why has the FCC not updated their safety standards from the days when we lived without any of this wireless technology? because they're using these frequencies as a weapon. We know that. And a lot of people, they just don't want to know. They don't really care. I like my cell phone. I love being able to talk to my friend in the supermarket. Leave me alone. The standards have not been, have not been changed from the days when we lived with electromagnetic fields at 60 cycles per second or less, the days that we had the, the landline. So we now are saturated in very dangerous, very dangerous uh, frequencies. And here on this page, she destroys the myths put out by the FCC and the telecommunications industry. The only adverse biological effect from exposure to electromagnetic radiation is heating. Really? Not so. Uh, the only effects that we have to worry about are acute, not long-term. The cumulative effects of these electromagnetic microwave frequencies are so incredibly dangerous and there are so many studies that say exactly that. They're lying to you. They're lying to the public. Measuring radiation power levels by averaging over time allows us to understand the impact to our health. Peak radiation exposures are not necessary to measure to understand the potential impact from an exposure. Not so. Peak millimeter second radiation bursts impact our bodies at the cellular level. FCC's exposure limits, limits average the radiation exposures for 30 minutes. Rather than consider the intense pulses that people are exposed to, and we are exposed now 24-7 to intense pulses that are intermittent, irregular. Your body never knows when it's going to get hit. You don't feel it, but your body, every cell in your body, is reacting to those pulses. And you can never adjust to irreg irregular pulses, irregular hits, because you don't know when they're coming. And that causes trauma. So think about a child who is growing up in an environment that is so toxic and so sick, where their parents are, you know, for whatever reason, striking out at that child, and that child never even knows it's coming. That child will experience a trauma, and that trauma, one effect of it is that the child then, their body is in survival mode. It keeps the adrenal glands working 24-7, which causes adrenal fatigue. Anyway, I will link below to everything. Um, you can maybe hear frustration in my voice, my tone. 
I am somebody who's hypersensitive to these frequencies. I have to now live in chronic physical pain with an awful lot of symptoms that wear you down. And yes, that I have to live in this incredibly dangerous environment now 24-7. Well, when you happen to think that life is important, that means all life is important. And when you see the effects of just talking about this one danger that we are subjected to, you can see it, you can read it in the comment section, many of you were affected, you can see it in the environment, the trees are dying, we don't have any insects anymore, hardly, the bees are dying, um, the frequencies, if you're someone who's connected to nature, you can see, like I saw just a couple of days ago, birds that were flying all over the place and I, and there were so many, I, I, it was like, they were just coming, coming, coming. And I thought, okay, they're migrating, but they don't seem to be in any kind of pattern. Some of the birds were flying in circles. Birds were flying on top of one another. And yeah, pulsating frequencies can do that to the birds. You know, life forms that that count on, you know, their, their, my migratorial systems that rely on sonar to direct them. All of this is being so torn apart. Here are letters from U.S. agencies raising concern about the outdated FCC exposure limits. So, yeah, I hope that you circulate this, this site. Um, essentially what these tips are, keep the cell phone away from you. And the closer you have it to your body, the more dangerous it is, the more at risk you are of developing cancer. And they just put out cancer. They don't talk about the myriad illnesses, diseases, syndromes that are caused by these frequencies. But good for CBS here. It's no secret that cell phones emit electromagnetic radiation, but is it harmful? The CDC says there's no proof of harm. The World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer calls the radiation possibly carcinogenic to humans, and recent research, including an ominous 2009 Journal of Clinical Oncology study, have drawn similar conclusions, possibly carcinogenic. So. Uh, here are the tips. The tips. Don't sleep like this. Don't keep it under your pillow. Don't have it on your bedside. They say put it on airplane mode. My research. They can turn your airplane mode off, but even on airplane mode, it is still emitting dangerous frequencies. Keep it away. Turn it off completely and put it in another room. Pockets. Men, you carry that cell phone in your pocket. Women, you put that cell phone in your bra. Breast cancer, testicular cancer. Men, the microwave radiation is killing your sperm cells. Um, it's encouraging kids to use cell phones. Big mistake, obviously. But here, if cell phone radiation does cause damage, Dr. Dav Davis would never, ever say that. So they're softening. If it causes damage. And then the parent thinks to themselves, well, all of these products are on the market. 
and we've got agencies to ensure our protection. So it's so it's fine. No, our agencies are there for corporations to profit. They're not representing us. They don't care about our health. And when you use these frequencies as a weapon, the weaker the signal indicating indicated on the cell phone display, it means that they're, the cell phone is trying to get a signal from cell phone towers and it's pulling the frequencies more intensely to get that stronger um, signal. And once you're at that stronger signal, that means that you have stronger frequencies going right into your body, affecting every cell in your body. Um, and what a lot of uh, experts have said, go back to landlines. Use your cell phones for emergency purposes only. The back of the cell phone emits stronger, stronger frequencies than the front. So, uh, I don't see, keep the keypad turned away, mistake. Uh, I'm not sure, how do you, if you can't see the keypad, how do you <laughs> make a phone call or whatever? Maybe people make the call and then turn it around thinking that the back is safer than the front. Well, it's not. Uh, don't talk on the cell phone for long periods of time. You're doing tremendous damage to your brain. Failing to switch sides. Don't talk on the cell phone on the, uh, you know, just the left or the right. Switch it around. Forget about texting. Uh, mistake. Texting is safer than talking. So, um, I'm also going to link below to this site, Parents for Safe Technology. And here, this is not updated, by the way. So, but still, it goes through what other countries have done to protect their citizens and what the U.S. fails to do. France, all of the laws that have passed, all of the schools that have gotten rid of their Wi-Fi, Belgium, Spain, Israel, um, Israel has, has really taken an awful lot of action to protect their citizens, especially their children, from Wi-Fi. But here in the United States, we have an FCC that won't even update their standards. Australia and Italy and the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, the potential dangers of electromagnetic fields and their effect on the environment, you can click on this link and find more information. Switzerland, Germany, Austria, United Kingdom, European Environment Agency. We have so many countries and so many agencies in different countries that have been working to find um, safe levels of this wireless technology that we have. The United States has done nothing. Seven pages of schools around the world that have taken action regarding the wireless technology list of schools and organizations that have gotten rid of Wi-Fi. Why have they gotten rid of Wi-Fi? Because they have learned it is dangerous, very dangerous, very dangerous indeed. So please circulate this document to parents who have kids in our public schools with not only the Wi-Fi routers in their classrooms sitting right above their heads, but some classrooms have multiple Wi-Fi routers and so many schools have cell phone towers, multiple cell phone towers on school property because the schools get their monthly checks from the telecommunication company that they are, uh, that has leased leased property to put up the cell phone tower on the school. Money over safety. Adults who don't care about a child's safety, they only care about how much money they can get. Our government does know. It does know. 
about how dangerous the environment has become. So my next video will be focusing on this, which was sent to me by a subscriber who I want to thank, the microwave syndrome or electro hypersensitivity historical background. Our government has recognized that many people are affected by the environment that we live in and the numbers are increasing. Our government knows this. Some countries have recognized electromagnetic sensitivity and they have their those who are electromagnetically sensitive are disabled and their governments actually provide help for their electromagnetically sensitive population. Here in the United States we get laughed at, we get shamed, we get ridiculed, we get called crazy, we get sent to psychiatric hospitals, we get doctors looking at us as if we have some psychiatric disorder because what we are reporting they think it's just psychosomatic. We live in a very twisted country. So here, you know, pro, um, PubMed.gov, National Institutes of Health, um, they recognize microwave syndrome, electron hypersensitivity, it's a real disease, and excessive exposure or chronic exposure, even for a brief period of time, can induce microwave syndrome, which I will be talking about in my next video. Um, so I'm going to be concentrating on our U.S. Army. Yes, it's the Navy uh, document that an awful lot of people now know of, our Naval Medical Research Institute. <laughs> this was how long ago? My God, it was, uh, where's the year on this? In 1971. Our Navy funded studies to find out the biological effects of microwave electromagnetic frequencies and published this paper in 1971. And this paper is right here and the, the the it's like countless the effects from the frequencies that we are now saturated in the whole body the bone marrow bone skin corneal damage um, cataracts damage to the eyes to the brain to the sinuses to the to the muscles to the um, central nervous system, atomic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system, every system, every biological system, every cell in your body is being affected. The psychological disorders, the behavioral changes, the blood disorders, the vascular disorders, enzyme and other biochemical changes, all from, all from the microwave electromagnetic frequencies we are saturated in that the FCC has failed, has failed to update their standards. Brain, liver, spleen, metabolic disorders, gastrointestinal disorders, endocrine, endocrine gland changes, histological changes, genetic and chromosomal changes, and miscellaneous effects. The Army conducted their own study the biological effects of selected non-lethal weapons lasers radio frequency directed energy that is what the cell phone is or the cell phone tower or our computers and our TVs they are directed energy weapons emitting very dangerous frequencies that they can set at particular frequencies to affect the entire population. Um, auroral bio effects, sonar, and we have these instruments now on our cell phone towers. So the Army and the Navy and our uh, 
health agencies, our government, they all know the effects. By the way, this is a very good document for anybody who does research on targeted individuals or any targeted individual. What you are experiencing is absolutely real. And frankly, this document proves that what you experience is very real because they talk about targeting individuals with these frequencies. And lastly, the negative effects of electromagnetic fields coming from Consumer Health Organization of Canada. The effects on the effects on our melatonin, penile gland, adrenals, keeping us in survival mode, keeping us stressed like we never have been before the effects on our eyes, the effects on our brains, the effects on our sleep. All right, I will link below to all of this information. I hope that you circulate it. And I am sorry to all of you who have, well, for the six years I've been on YouTube, but recently you have been leaving comments saying, you are so not feeling well, and you know that it is because of the frequencies that you are subjected to, whether it's, you know, smart meters, the cell phone tower down the street where you live, the Gwen Towers, or the ultra-low frequencies, you know, that we are seeing uh, being set off around the country on satellites. We... No more. I am sorry my videos are so long. Please circulate this information.